Uh, I'd like to open up a, a question discussion by, if I can, asking you a question that, that stems from the chairman's guidance, which was issued on uh, December 21st. Um, one aspect of this talked about the primacy of the fight in Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, where you quoted, if I quote you, you say, we must continue to push our best talent forward and into the fight and make painful choices elsewhere in order to make sure that we have our best talent in Afghanistan and Pakistan. It was then four days later that we had the Christmas near attack, and suddenly, as you said at your, in your opening remarks, a country that wasn't on our radar, Yemen, just went on the radar. And who knows, perhaps before the end of the year, there will be an Iran contingency that's on the radar. How does one, uh, do, do we have the assets and the troops, and how does one plan when you start the year planning focused on AFPAC, within days expanding even just within the Central Command region to Yemen and perhaps elsewhere, are we prepared for this multiplicity of challenges in this part of the world? Um, I spoke earlier about uh, Stuart coming up with his Google map of, map of Yemen. and. But I don't want to leave the impression that we haven't been focused on Yemen for a significant period of time, because we have. We've been engaged with their military. Uh, we've been engaged in terms of their support, the support. And Yemen is a country, as is Somalia, that I've been concerned about for some time uh, in terms of becoming the next safe haven for al-Qaeda. And certainly you now see that uh, um, very much in the, in the fore as a result of this incident on the 25th of December. So, uh, and from a standpoint of capability and what I think we need to be able to do, I'm very comfortable that we can do that right now. Uh, we have certainly focused on Iran for a long time uh, and recognize, uh, and to my remarks earlier about the pressure that is on our forces, we recognize what the potential could be there, uh, and at the same time we've looked uh, to do uh, all we can to ensure that uh, conflict doesn't break out there, uh, while at the same time preparing forces uh, as we do for many contingencies that we understand might occur. So uh, I mean, we're, we're very hard pressed right now because we are in these two conflicts, and yet the vast majority of our capability in terms of these two conflicts is our, gr our ground forces. Uh, and uh, certainly not for me to decide, but uh, the, the likelihood that our ground forces would have to go somewhere in these kinds of numbers uh, in some other part of the world, or even in the same region, I think is, I think is pretty low. Uh, and we have a tremendous Air Force and a tremendous Navy that is actually operating, they're both operating at a pretty high pace, not what the ground forces are, but also they, they present a strategic reserve uh, that uh, I very much rely on, and, and we are working hard to sustain that as well. Um, also, I'd point out that, that there are 43 countries in, in Afghanistan with combat troops, that we are not in this alone. And I believe for years that uh, we can't do it alone anymore. Uh, and it takes allies. It takes partners. Uh, it takes alliances to essentially move forward in the world that we're living in. So uh, as we increase the number of troops that go into Afghanistan, so did NATO, uh, much against the grain of what a lot of people thought would happen as recently as a year ago. And NATO, uh, certainly from their commitments, intends to maintain the ratio of about two to one. There are some 40,000 NATO troops there now, uh, and they'll go up as we add troops over the next year. So uh, we, the, uh, in terms of our planning, to get directly to your question, we focus on this a lot. Uh, we're not starting from a clean sheet of paper. We've been focused on uh, uh, other potential areas for a long time, uh, and, uh, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Um, just one more question for me. <laughs> um, I did want to ask you an Iran question, an analytical question, not a, an operational question, because also in, in, the, uh, in the chairman's guidance um, for 2010, there's a very interesting sentence which, which says that uh, um, uh, about the president having uh, offered the Iranians engagement and there are regional initiatives that give the Iran's rulers ample incentive 
to cease developing nuclear arms. Um, the assumption there is that, that you are clear in your mind that the Iranians are uh, um, uh, engaged in developing nuclear, nuclear arms. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. I, I've, and I've, I believe that they're, they're on a path uh, that has uh, a strategic intent to develop nuclear weapons um, and have been for some time. Uh, and, and as I've said in more than one forum, I think that outcome is a, is a potentially a very, very uh, destabilizing uh, outcome. Um, on, the, on the other hand, when asked about uh, striking Iran uh, specifically, that also has uh, a very, very destabilizing uh, outcome. And what I worry about in both those cases, quite frankly, are the unintended consequences of both those outcomes. Uh, even for the ones that we can predict, um, I worry about the ones we can't predict, um, and and that that part of the world be could become much more, much more unstable, uh, which is a dangerous global outcome, much less regional, uh, for the world we're living in right now. So that's pretty small space between those two right now, uh, and and that's why one of the things that I think is so important is that we continue internationally, diplomatically politically, not just we, the United States, but the international community, continue to focus on this to prevent uh, those two outcomes. Very good. Thank